quick introduction. My name is Naveen, and I have about 20 years experience, guys. And uh, last about uh, 10 plus years, I lived in US, and last 10 years, I'm here in India. Last four to five years, I'm heavily involved in big data and data science uh, platforms and technology science, for those of you who are not there. Uh, generally, I would type that in, but I don't want to bore others uh, who attended yesterday, follow me to just go and give a brief uh, oral uh, introduction like that, guys, okay? Having said that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have one of you come on in real quick, uh, just uh, we'll, uh, maybe I have Archana on the top. Archana, is it okay if I uh, put you on air and maybe give you, uh, you could give a brief introduction about uh, yourself, like how Tarun has done yesterday, and we can go from there. Does that sound fair enough, Archana? Are you able to come on air? Let me see any volunteers, guys. Anybody wants to come on air, give me a quick introduction. Okay, Geeta, great. You're the next one line. So, there you go, Geeta. Go ahead, Geeta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, 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 everyone. My name is Geeta. I'm working for BCBA from past an year. Uh, I work in, I don't know what PM, AM, AM, AMX, MX is. I work in Dev, QA, seat environments, and other production support. Uh, I work in Detroit, in Michigan State. Very good. How's Detroit today, Geeta? Is it hot? Is it warm? Or is it cold? Um, it rained in the morning, but it's good now. Mm, very good. All right. All right. Good to know. So hopefully you'll, uh, you'll have a warm day and you'll have some fun today. What is your yeah. motivation on data science? Uh, uh, um, my motivation is I, I studied, I, I, I did majors in data analytics, data mining. So I am interested in those rather than program, programming languages like Java or something else. So I want to pursue career in data science, data analytics, in the same stream where I did masters or where I did majors. And where did you do your masters? Uh, that is in uh, New Mexico State University. That is in New Mexico State. New Mexico, I see. I see. You graduated recently? Yeah, uh, it's been a year. It's been here. Yeah, very good. Congratulations yes. on that. Thank, thank you. So with a little bit of data mining background, uh, these things uh, should be a bit more easy uh, to you and uh, you, you will be able to make some good sense out of that would be my uh, opinion. Um, yeah. Yeah, I listened to your uh, online video on YouTube. Okay. I'm so much impressed with the way you teach. So, I immediately contacted you. So, I thought of yeah, I did not listen to any other any any other videos. I listened so, to only one, and I thought of contacting you, approaching you. And, and I I really hope I'll be able to keep up uh, the trust you have in me. Uh, what I have online is really a very very uh, you know uh, kind of uh, if you're playing cricket, what you have seen is just uh, tools there. Uh, you if you like that, you'll fall in love with the fours and sixes I'm gonna hit uh, as we go on, and. Hopefully, I'll be able to keep up the trust you have in me. So, gentlemen, ladies, uh, data science, data scientists, a profession of the future. Harvard comes out and says, hey, it is a more, it is the sexiest job of the 21st century. Someone like Harvard uh, saying something like that is not really, uh, you know, is really cool, guys, okay? They never said learn Java or learn dot, dot .NET, but uh, they're right now coming up and saying, you know, you look at the romantic term, they're using it. And that's because of all the mix of... Uh, cool things that it brings into. And uh, data science is something where it will not only be helpful for us from a professional standpoint, but, but it will also help us from a uh, personal standpoint has been my observation, guys. And uh, you'll find the benefits of that, guys, okay? Some of the reasons why we won't learn, uh, we are all interested in better career, better salary, and we all want to get into bigger companies and uh, better job opportunities. And data is a new oil, new natural resource, it is free. Everybody wants to uh, use this natural resource and they want to get some uh, uh, gold, which is under this, uh, uh, under this land. So data is land, uh, under the land is the gold, and everybody wants to get that gold. But the only problem, it's hidden. Not everybody knows how to do that. But there are some tips, there are some tri uh, tricks, there are some techniques how you can get that gold, guys, okay? Uh, what is that? Well, that is what data science is, guys, okay? So data is everywhere. That is a mantra, guys, okay? And it is a new natural resource. That is another mantra. And that is one of the reasons why uh, we may want to look at uh, this career, guys, okay? Everybody okay with this one, guys? Give me a quick acknowledgement, please. <clears throat> Could you just type in a Y, guys, if, you're, if you guys are doing okay? 
uh, Teja, Teja and uh, Archana and uh, Kishore, just keep me posted, guys. I know you have indicated that the voice is low, but I'm trying my best to keep a little bit uh, higher on voice, but just keep me posted and uh, we'll uh, try to make some progress, guys, okay? Great, thank you, Teja. And uh, gentlemen, ladies, uh, so how, how can we achieve all these or any one of these things or how can we achieve the goals uh, is, you know, data can help. And uh, by learning these techniques, uh, these tricks, we can become smarter. Once you're smarter, there, there is always an advantage. So if you have a couple of guys whom you need to take into your cricket team and you know one of them is smarter, obviously will give preference. So these techniques will help us, uh, uh, you know, uh, help us help the organizations in looking at their problems and in solving their problems uh, uh, more creatively and more innovatively. So one line answer data will help or data can help is what is guys. Okay, that's what I'm conveying. A friendly definition of data science, it is the skill of extracting knowledge from data. Knowledge is a goal, data is the land, under the land lies the goal and we need to get the goal, which is knowledge, guys, okay? What do we do with the knowledge? Well, the knowledge is useful for improving the business. That is, again, a friendly way of looking at data science, guys, okay? Another friendly way, data is like the, raw data is like a puzzle which is, which needs to be solved. And uh, during the process of, uh, Putting the solving the puzzle, what we do is we try to arrange them. As we arrange them, we are able to get a picture of you know what is going on in the uh, puzzle and what's inside the puzzle. We are able to visualize, we are able to analyze. As we get a little bit more, or as we complete it, what happens is we can tell a story. We see a family here. I see a father and child, and it's a warm day, cloudy day, and maybe that's a family outing. It's look, it looks like it's a beach and a shore and things like that. What are we doing? We're coming out with a story from data. What is data? Raw data is like a puzzle which needs to be solved. As we solve the puzzle, we're able to tell out the story. What is that? That is again another friendly way of looking at data science, guys, okay? Digging a little bit deep, 70% of the time is spent, oops, pardon me, on preparing the data, 70 to 80% of the time, and that is the generally referred as the pre-processing stage. About 20 to 30 percent of the time is where the advanced analytics come into the picture, which is the machine learning and the advanced visualizations, which will help us in coming up with insights and recommendations, guys. Okay, that is generally uh, what data science is about. So, what do we do? Well, once we get the gold from the land, we want to use that. We want to use that gold in predicting or to improve the business. So, we're using the knowledge to predict the unknown, predictive analytics, and things like that. That is what data science helps us, guys. Okay. Everybody okay with me so far, guys, gentlemen, ladies? I'm going a little bit fast. I just want to make sure the people who heard me yesterday are not getting, uh, um, you know, uh, over uh, overly bored and things like that. So just bear with me, guys, okay? I tend to go a little bit slow, but for the benefit of everyone and in the interest of everyone, I'm maintaining a slightly higher uh, speed here. But uh, let's have another friendly look at data science, guys. We have bank, uh, and the bank has a bunch of customers. It's easy to say who's male and female. There are also uh, other groups of uh, customers, you know, not just male and female, but some are married, some are unmarried, some are insured, some are uninsured. And there are many other categories of uh, customers, guys, okay? Imagine or visualize each customer is, each color is representing one uh, specific group. So maybe all the oranges are married, all the pinks are unmarried, all the blues are insured, all the purples are uninsured, all the greens are maybe something else, different categories, guys, okay? Imagine on a fine day, Group of customers close their accounts. And yesterday we were talking about American Express. Looks like our friend Tarun is from Amex. He appears to be working in Amex. And we, are, uh, we took an example where a group of customers close their accounts in Amex and move on to Citibank, guys, okay? So what do we do? Well, what does Amex do? Amex would definitely be concerned. And on a daily basis, you know, a bunch of customers are moving from Amex to Citibank and vice versa and things like that. So what are these companies doing? They're, do they're analyzing the data. They're constantly trying to figure who are the people who are likely to churn tomorrow. The process of leaving one customer and moving on, one vendor and moving on to another vendor is referred as churn, guys, okay? And uh, the companies on a daily basis, they, they analyze their data to understand who are the possible customers who are about, about to churn or who are likely to churn and things like that. So what do they do? They take their existing data, they start analytics, they per start performing some analytics, they try to understand who have similar characteristics. So again, all the pinks are probably unmarried, all the purples are married, oranges are uh, insured, and green and blue are different categories. As we analyze a little bit more, as we perform a little bit more of advanced analytics, we can go ahead 
and group all of them, all of these existing customers who have similar characteristics, guys. Okay, so all the pink women have similar characteristics. So what do we do? Let's let's go ahead and dig into it, guys. Okay, let's come here. And what we are telling is, if you notice this one, these pink women are close to or similar to these pink women. Their characteristics are similar. And what happened here? These pink women, one, two, three, all all three were here. And three out of three have moved on from American Express to Citibank, guys. Okay. So among our existing customers, these are existing customers that we've taken. We're performing, performing some advanced analytics. And what are we uh, about to understand? Well, since these pink women, oops, pardon me. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Come here. Since these pink women, we're assuming they have similar characteristics as these, and three out of three have churned from Citibank to Amex, we are now about to kind of assume that these are the women who are about, there's a 100% likelihood that they're about to churn uh, tomorrow, guys, okay? Why? Because all the 100% of the pink women, maybe they're all married, maybe they're all uninsured, and they're all females, right? All the, the 100% of the uh, of them have churned yesterday. So in, in the remaining set of data sets, there's a 100% likelihood that these are going to churn, guys, okay? If we dig a little bit deeper, what do we have here now? Notice, guys, the, take, the, take a look at the purples. Let's say those are the unmarried men. And, uh, and what do we have? Well, totally we had about three of them here yesterday. But what happened about a couple of them have churned. That means two out of three are churning from Citibank to uh, America, um, I'm sorry, American Express to Citibank, guys. Okay, so what does that mean? We perform some advanced analytics. We compare the characteristics and uh, use the machine learning principles and they come back and say, hey, here are the group of guys who are similar to these purple uh, customers, guys, okay? So what can we say now? We can kind of assume that there's a 66% uh, chance or 66% likelihood that every two out of three people who have similar characteristics to these guys who are purples and men are likely to leave. So there's a 66% chance, why? Because two out of three are, have already churned and that is how we're coming up with that number, guys, okay? If you proceed a little bit here, uh, further and take a look at the next pattern, what do we have? Well, now there's one green there. There were originally three of them here, one out of three are churning. What does that mean? Let, let's say for sake of simplicity, these are the unmarried women. And uh, just, just, let's just keep it simple. One out of three of the unmarried women are churning from MX to Citibank. So what does that mean? Among the existing customers, there's a 33% chance that she, she will churn. Okay, guys, what are we doing? Well, that is what is called identifying hidden patterns. What are this? It's easy to say who's male versus who's female, right? That is like the sand and the soil on the land. We can, anybody can easily recognize the sand and the soil, but it's very tough to find out the gold. What is that? The gold is the hidden patterns. How do you find them? That's where your machine learning techniques and other analytics techniques come to your rescue and they give you an idea how to go ahead and come out uh, with these certain patterns or relationships guys okay everybody with me so far guys gentlemen ladies my apologies again for those of you uh, whom I'm repeating but could you just type in a quick why guys if you if you guys are so far okay with me gentlemen ladies okay great thank you guys and let's come back here a uh, little bit of more analysis you know okay these are the group of guys who are less likely to leave and here are the uh, loyal customers so we're able to find even more uh, additional patterns saying that hey these are the guys whom we don't need to worry about and we don't need to target them but if you know somebody is going to leave you better retain them what do we do well you come up with promotions you come up with other kinds of plans you try to retain them you give them special offers and call them and uh, you know, sometimes these kind of things happen to us also guys all to the blue we keep getting some calls and they say hey you know what we're giving special offer and things like that so something triggered in their data and maybe they thought you know they should give that offer to retain us and things like that that is what we mean by identifying hidden patterns and that is data science that's another friendly look at data science guys okay we find hidden patterns using the data okay that is what we are calling as goal guys okay I hope everybody's okay, guys. We use the same concept, you know, that's called the segmentation. We can apply it in telecom uh, on a daily basis. Lots of customers are churning from one vendor to another one. Uh, they're going from AT&T to T-Mobile to Sprint and things like that, guys, okay? Uh, the concept is the same. If you know the ambassador car, you can drive a Benz, you can drive a BMW uh, with a little bit of change, right? So as the domain changes, you know, the concepts will remain same. The data only will change, but, uh, you know, we can apply the similar concepts. In healthcare pharmaceuticals, we can try to understand uh, who are the patients certain drugs or medicines will work and what are the diseases they are likely to 
get, we can go ahead and do the similar kind of uh, predictions in the healthcare. Financial industry is what we look. And if we take the education industry, we can also identify the students for, and try to predict who needs help. In other words, who's likely to fail versus pass and uh, help the institutions in trying to catch up and things like that, guys, okay? So again, those are the different domains. Um, why would companies do something like that? Every company wants to increase their revenue and they want to increase their profits. Uh, they want to open up new markets. Maybe you're into stock exchange, you want to open up into Forex exchange. So we could you reuse a lot of concepts of uh, you know, machine learning and things like that and uh, use them in uh, Forex also. Improve the operations. It might be anything, you might be in manufacturing, you might be in any other vertical or horizontal, there are a lot of operations and there's a lot of data that everybody is dealing with, okay? By investigating this data, we can find hidden patterns and try to improve our operations. New features, you're coming up with a video game or maybe uh, some other product and uh, generally we are allowed to download and as we are allowed to download, lots of guys are tweeting, talking and WhatsApping, Facebooking and uh, other things, guys, right? There's a lot of conversations happening on uh, uh, internet on uh, social networking sites and things like that and what's happening is companies are watching them behind the scenes they have an eye on all these conversations and what do they do well they will go ahead and uh, try to understand if their customers are happy what are they happy what are the features they like and not liking things like that that's where text analytics and sentimental analysis comes into picture guys okay and then we have insights that is the goal that is what the entire data science is everybody wants to get the goal from the our data guys okay everybody with me guys gentlemen ladies are you all okay with this slide could you just type in a quick why guys if you guys are okay cool. great thank you guys moving on well that's our raw data what do we do well we go ahead and tell a story from raw data how well that is what data is data science okay we get the knowledge we get the gold from the land guys okay and moving on well predictive analytics in a, in a way or the other we are all involved in predictive analytics guys okay i could probably put to one of you on the you know on the air and maybe ask you you know have you ever done predictive analytics and you know, uh, rather a, uh, a layman's answer maybe no i don't even know what is predictive analytics is what they might say but if you dig a little bit deep right if you ever drive we are constantly involuntarily gauging and trying to predict uh, as we are overtaking we're predicting or kind of you know our mind is involved in the predictive analytics of uh, predicting you know in what speed we need to go in and things like that that's uh, kind of another friendly look at uh, predictive analytics. Then we have the animals. Uh, again, I have briefly discussed about this. Chennai, a few years back in uh, Chennai, a tsunami stuck and a lot of human casualties were, have been reported, but none, none of the uh, animal casualties have been reported, guys, okay? It seems animals somehow detected the changes in the, in the, uh, in the, in the weather and they predicted something was not right and they moved on moved away from the shore as the weather kept on changing. As a result of that, you know, there, were, there weren't any animal casualties reported. And, uh, but a lot of humans uh, did not uh, detect uh, that one. Or in other words, even animals also are in a way kind of involved in uh, predictive analytics. Again, that's a touch of uh, predictive analytics, guys, okay? Everybody okay with this slide, guys? Gentlemen, ladies? Cool. Could you just type in a quick why, guys? So there is our data scientist. What do we do? We write code. We derive insight from data. When we say write code, we don't really write code 100% of the time, but more we are thinking in terms of metrics and trying to understand what are the patterns of data that we must be focusing on and things like that. And this is where a little bit of domain experience come to our uh, rescue. So we don't need to be domain experts in whatever we are going into, but having an idea uh, about the domain will always uh, help. And that's where we'll borrow a little bit of knowledge from uh, from uh, domain experts in real world. And again, um, it's in a traditional world, we focus 80 to 90% on the code and 10% on the data. Uh, here, it is not going to be like that, guys. We don't, for, definitely, we don't focus 80 to 90% on code, but we focus more on the data. Let me not uh, over uh, simplify it, but uh, that is what this means. And more importantly, we're getting the knowledge of the insights from the data, guys, okay? That's going to be our focus. We don't have to be a mechanical engineer to drive a car. We don't need to have a, PhD and things like that. A couple of years back or three years back, that's what everybody started uh, thinking about data science. So they started hiring the PhDs in statistics and uh, data science into their thing. So they were getting only the Sachin Tendulkar into the cricket. Once they got in Sachin Tendulkar today, 
everybody is realizing, okay, you can't play cricket with Sachin Tendulkar alone. You need uh, about uh, 11 players. So that's where a lot of openings and uh, you know, opportunities are opening up. And uh, uh, so, so that is uh, that is what that refers to, guys. Okay. Uh, in real world, it's always good uh, idea to have um, as data scientists. It, it is good to have an idea about uh, how to work with massive data sets such as Hadoop and uh, Spark. And also Python is picking up, guys. R is already established, whereas Python is picking up these days uh, in certain domains, especially in healthcare and finance. I think a lot of uh, Python is uh, uh, getting a lot of attention because of its programming nature. R, we will find it very, very non-technical and things like that. It's also very rich, but uh, uh, you know, Python is still catching up. R is already established, guys. Okay, if you're into analytics, mostly we'll see R is already being used and uh, things like that. Hadoop, MapReduce, all these things are more from a big data perspective. If you have an idea that is of help to you guys, okay? Everybody okay with this slide, guys? Can I move on to the next slide, guys? Cool, great. As a data scientist, uh, we focus more on visualizations and we try to have an understanding of the modeling techniques. How do you build the uh, modeling techniques or the machine learning algorithms and things like that? And once you use the modeling techniques, we need to be able to understand how to interpret, how to tell a story of, of the output that comes out of these modeling techniques. And that is what is storytelling, guys, okay? As a data scientist, we focus on these things a lot. We need to have an idea of statistics. Again, we don't need to be an expert in statistics. We can still do a lot of things without being a mechanical engineer. We can still drive the car throughout the country, guys, okay? So that would be my way of putting it. A data engineer focuses more on how to better store it, how to better process it, what are the optimized techniques of storing and processing is what a data engineer focuses on, guys, okay? Which tool is in the demand? Again, R is uh, naturally the one on the top. Python is still picking up the room. It is not there. Uh, but the R, because of its open nature, right, almost uh, many companies are, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, because of its open source, or rather it's a free tool, many companies are converting there. Uh, analytics from uh, into R because of its rich uh, libraries and visualization techniques, which are already available, uh, would be my take through. Let me know if that helps, okay? Again, uh, data science is about the future, guys. And we, we tend to focus more on the future than on the past. The traditional BI, it is not that. Uh, data science is something which came up just today, or you know, it wasn't there yesterday, but it was already there in the form of analytics and uh, business intelligence. And, but uh, in business intelligence, we tend to focus on the things we know and uh, uh, we focus more on the past, guys, okay? Whereas data science is kind of, we focus on the past, okay? But we try to predict the future and understand the future, what's going to happen in the future. We try to focus on the things we don't know. Um, that is what, uh, you know, is slightly interesting. Data scientists find what you don't know. BI tries to find what you know. You just try to verify and understand the root cause, guys, okay? And uh, um, which R is powerful analytical tool with many packages. That is true, Gita. R is very powerful and R works on RAM and memory. Yep, as long as your data fits on a single uh, node or server, R will come to your rescue. But today they're being, uh, they're working on integrating R and Spark so we can kind of go ahead and try to if you're good in ARC, you know, uh, R, you will be able to handle Spark. And you, know, you don't need to worry too much about Spark. Spark will handle if there is a lot of data and things like that. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, work is being done to integrate R and Spark. And it's getting a lot of uh, attention these days. Uh, probably that's going to be a very big hit shortly. Would be my prediction, guys. But I don't want to over-exaggerate. Um, but in, in a scenario where you have data sitting on multiple nodes or servers, R and Spark together, can come to your rescue, guys. Okay, that's what I'm trying to. And uh, is is it something to do with data mining? Well, data mining is part of the data science. Data mining is, uh, you know, more of a BI tool, more of BI, and uh, kind of uh, it was used more on small data. When you apply data mining techniques on large amounts of data or big data, that's what is referred as machine learning. Uh, it's uh, okay. it's a short answer, Roy. Okay, let me know if that helps. And um, here are some of the things uh, generally a data scientist uh, needs to be familiar with. Uh, you have to have an idea or you have to be an expert in R, guys. Let me put it like that. The other things you can have an idea uh, and uh, it will be helpful for you. It will be an advantage. And uh, we need to have enough understanding of how to work with uh, uh, 
uh, different kinds of data, different formats of data. Our main objective is to be able to get insights so that we can help the business is what it is, guys, okay? If you're a Java programmer or a .NET programmer, we generally focus on the data access layer, business layer, or the UI layer, and we don't really know what we're working on from a business standpoint, whereas in data science, we tend to focus more at high level, and we right away try to understand what is the problem, what is the business problem, and we try to uh, dig down deep using the data and try to get an understanding as we try to impact uh, our work directly impacts the business is another way of looking at it and a uh, few products you know what kind of products uh, do we develop or you know will uh, our products uh, end up looking like well here are a few examples Fitbit you know it's used for tracking your heartbeat your BPN other health related things Amazon's products or Amazon's recommendations is an example of a data product or a recommender system. The way when we search, you know, imagine you're searching for Reebok shoes and you don't even know that there's Nike or Adidas and Amazon comes up and says, hey, you know, apart from Reebok, you can also go for Nike and uh, Adidas, you know, so sometimes that is really a bit good or not, not just sometimes, but many times, many customers don't even know that there are other things. And, uh, you know, those recommendations really come to they help in get, get, getting an idea and getting quality products and things like that, guys, okay? So again, that's an example. And ads, if you're a 10 year old kid, we should not show the ads of hurdle for data science. They don't understand, they don't make sense, guys, okay? But if you're a guy who's into uh, software engineering, maybe we can help you uh, with right ads such as data science and big data to upskill yourself. Uh, whereas again, if you're a 10 year old kid, maybe show them some Reebok or Nike shoes. And so at what point of time, what ad to show and things like that, guys. That's what the ads are all. And if you notice, all these things are all over us, guys. Okay, we're already, you know, data science, machine learning, this is all over. Uh, this is everywhere and everything uh, is really machine learning. And Google.com itself is a data product. Uh, traffic patterns, if there's any one course or one discipline uh, which has a promise to solve the uh, problems of traffic uh, in, in any city, in the world, right, guys? Okay, that is data science, guys. Okay, no, the course, no, the discipline has the promise would be my take. Um, and uh, flu tracker, Google, they predicted flu. And before the even the government uh, issued an official notification, you know, they noticed that a lot of people are talking about flu and they went ahead and uh, started letting everybody know. And government took that seriously. They started issuing an official notification that flu has been spreading. And when things like that happen, we are helping each other, we're helping all of us. And you know, imagine writing a program in Java or .NET where you're helping others, guys. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to write a program, but that's exactly what data science is capable of. Okay, everybody okay with this slide, guys? Am I making sense, gentlemen, ladies? Great, thank you, guys. Okay, some of the things that we'll be looking at uh, here, you know, I'll be going, I'll be this course, I'm only going to be focusing on guys. Uh, uh, our programming, how do we manipulate the data, what is exploratory data analysis, we'll do some good case studies, how to visualize the data, uh, what is machine learning. Machine learning, if we understand the concepts, uh, when we go into Python or Spark, it is mostly uh, the difference in uh, syntax and things like that. Uh, but the conceptual understanding and conceptual way of working uh, should remain the same, guys, okay? So if you know the ambassador car, when you get, get onto BMW or Benz, you know, it will still be pretty. Uh, comfortable because ambassador is much more difficult and we already know the driving you know, it's a little bit of uh, fine uh, refining on BMW and Benz would be another way to put it guys okay so here are some of the things that would be going deep some of the machine learning techniques are listed here a uh, couple of them I could not accommodate because it was getting too uh, short but uh, you know if you want to uh, when to use what kind of machine learning this role some good case studies will be doing guys and they will come off uh, help to you uh, in real world and at your work also. And we'll be simplifying it. You could, you could as well go to Coursera and try to take the same course for free. Why would we do something like that with us is, you know, uh, generally they're going to too much of statistics and the jargon and things like that in the, in the first five minutes, we'll get lost guys, okay? So without going much into unnecessary statistical complications and concepts and things like that, we'll try to understand them in a much simpler way and try to be of help to you guys. That is uh, kind of a quick, uh, you know, uh, quick thing from me. Gentlemen, ladies, why do data science? Well, if any of you are looking at a better career, your objective is to get better salary, improve your salary, upskill yourself, get into good companies, 
uh, look for more opportunities, better opportunities. And if you think, if you heard of that mantra, data is everywhere. Gentlemen, ladies, data can help. It can help you make smarter. Welcome to the profession of the future, data science. Gentlemen, ladies, is it making sense, guys? Am I making sense, guys? Cool. Let's open it up for a few questions, guys. Let's give a few. My, my plan uh, is, let me see if I can go ahead and uh, that's one of the things. And let me see where we are. Question three. So here is uh, the thing that we showed you yesterday. Uh, our uh, support team may have already shared this uh, contents with you guys. And let's see what else I got. So in the, um, every day on a daily basis, I will be going over uh, some uh, data science concepts, conceptual data science concepts that we need to have an idea about. These are the conceptual concepts. And then we'll get into, on a daily basis, we'll go ahead and do some uh, labs in R, followed by our programming concepts, data manipulation techniques, exploratory data analysis, data visualization techniques. Uh, we'll go a little bit deep into it. And then we'll get into a touch of statistics. I'm not a statistics expert. I don't promise you to make you a statistics expert, guys, but I'll give you an idea in my own, with my own limitations and things like that. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll not go TB too deep into it, but I'll give you a quick insight into some basics of uh, statistics, guys, okay? And then we'll get into machine learning without, uh, you know, in machine learning, I will take you deeper. I will try to make you understand a lot of uh, case studies, uh, when to use what, how to think about the machine learning techniques. Again, I do not have a couple of them listed here, support vector machines, and uh, there's not one on that I'm planning to add. Um, that uh, I need a little time on that. So these are some of the machine learning techniques that I will be focusing on, guys, okay? I'm approximately looking anywhere from six to eight weeks, a little bit here, a little bit there. Just uh, be prepared for that, guys. On a daily basis, I intend to take it from 8, 8, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. our time. So if that works out for you, please uh, stay tuned. And uh, uh, so that is uh, some things I quickly wanted to uh, share with you, guys, okay? Everybody okay with that, guys? Could you give me a quick acknowledgement, please? If you copy that point. And if you have any other questions, let's go ahead and open it up. And from tomorrow onwards, we'll actually go ahead and get into our actual, uh, you know, the content and things like that. So let me see. There you go. So this board will get started with actual uh, data science uh, content and so on. Uh, five plus Monday to Friday round. Okay, any other questions, guys? Okay, you don't have to come from an IT background. Hmm, Sas, Teja, Akhil. Sas is your Ferrari car. If you want to go to from home to work, if you buy a Ferrari, you're spending a million dollars. Very, very expensive. Okay, everybody who's into Sas is now looking at R. Why? It's open source, it's free. Uh, everything you can do in Sas, you know, uh, you can definitely do it in R. But Saskia gives you GUIs here, you will end up writing, calling the functions and things like that. We'll not write hundreds and hundreds of lines of code, but we need to have an idea when to call, what kind of programs which are called as functions and things like that. Let me know if that helps or kill. Question time, guys. More questions? As well. It's an advantage, Sarun, but uh, it takes some good amount of time. So uh, if you, if possible, try to just go ahead and... Uh, uh, do it parallelly. If you're able to spend maybe a half an hour on a daily basis, just spend a half an hour on Python and try to catch up on that. That would be my recommendation. What are the firms that are adapting to big data? You don't need to have a lot of data to adopt to big data, Roy. Uh, a lot of guys who are getting into big data. And as I said, because data, everybody is looking at the data today. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more for scenarios about that. Uh, it's not that specific firms, but anyone and everyone is capable of getting into uh, big data, okay? Share some links for, uh, oh, okay. I will do that through, I will try to, Google is your friend, short answer through, but uh, you know, I'll try to pass on something. Placement assistance uh, will not guarantee anything like that, Akhil, but uh, we'll try to give you help. You know, it's not fair, it's not uh, right for us to promise you any uh, thing from a placement perspective, uh, but we'll try to assist you would be my take on that. We'll do some, we'll do a couple of use cases on text mining, and that should give you an idea uh, on social media and uh, analytics, uh, Kishore. More questions, guys? 
And uh, does that does that give you an idea? Does that help you? The today's presentation. Did you feel better, guys, from yesterday? Statistics. I will give you basic introduction. We don't have to go deep. Again, you don't have to be a mechanical engineer to drive a car. So I will cover basics of statistics, and that should be good enough for you to get started, Roy. No, 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 not part of this one, uh, Geeta. That's a that's a different uh, one. If you um no, I think you guys are uh, probably uh, looking at uh, the online thing. That was kind of a different. Uh, you know, focus that was completely like a diploma, whereas here we are uh, focusing on just our part of it. So it'll be somewhere around 30 to 36 hours, or maybe 40 hours would be my day for approximately. Yeah, we'll use R for visualization here. Around. Cloud certification is going to be slightly difficult, Jay. Uh, I don't think there's anybody who can promise that you'll. Uh, uh, complete or you'll be able to get through cloud air certification but definitely some of the concepts and things like that will be of help to you if you're a good cricket player i don't really care whether you are certified or not so if you're a good uh, scientist i don't care whether you have certification or not i do a lot of interviews i don't really care about certifications i just try to listen and understand what they're familiar with and things like that hmm, approximately 50 hours okay so take it with a pinch of salt around, short answer. Kishore, AI, machine learning is the heart of AI. Okay, if you are understanding machine learning concepts, you know, you are indirectly into AI and things like that. Everything is AI, future is going to be AI. But uh, if we have an idea of these things, you know, we are actually into kind of AI. There are much more, few more uh, things that we can learn about specific to AI, but this is the heart. There's also eyes and ears but we'll focus on the heart. Simply learn. <laughs> yeah, again, if you, you can check the route around. You like them, you can go with them. There'll be some complexities, there'll be some issues you'll come across, uh, so you just want to be aware. Not everything will be straightforward there. Covered in diploma. So in diploma, we have Python, Hadoop, and Spark because. Okay, so gentlemen, ladies, what we'll do is, We'll go ahead and uh, uh, wrap it up here today. Um, and tomorrow we'll again meet at the same time at 8 a.m. And on a daily basis, we'll go ahead and uh, continue. or try to have a one hour session and we'll get started, guys, okay? So you can go ahead and stay tuned and uh, try to uh, give us some confirmations and things like that so that the guys can make a decision and so on. So, uh, uh, so before I wrap up, any other questions, guys? Any of you want to come on here and maybe have a quick chat and things like that? Contact number, okay. So here is my contact number. There you go. I'm sending it to everyone. So you can also go ahead and email me and things like that. I will share those things a little later. And any other questions, guys, before we wrap up? Okay, guys. Person from marketing background, you should that, that's going to be very, very helpful. Uh, is a short answer, Akhil. You don't have to come from a IT background, and some of these concepts that we'll be looking they will make you look at the world in a slightly different way, which is a I would say more of an evolved way, uh, is what it is considered as, and it should be very helpful to you. That's my personal opinion. Cool. No, I mean, I mean, if you know Tableau, it's an advantage because, but uh. Again, in the scope of this course, we are not covering all those things. Those are more of classroom where we have some of these things covered, but not in the scope of non-line. All right, guys, so allow me to wrap up. Our folks will be here for about five to 10 minutes more. If you have any questions and things like that, please feel free to let them know and they'll pass it on uh, whatever they can. And uh, uh, Gita, Tableau is more of a only visualization tool. It's not a data analytics tool, it's more of a data visualization it's more you know GUI based rather than code based is what it is so its purpose is different that's a hammer this is a screwdriver this is like more of a swiss army r is like a swiss army you could be visualization is just one part of it you don't do machine learning using tableau you do machine learning using r okay this is like a swiss army knife you can do lots of things and tableau is only visualization uh, with a few more uh, uh, touch of analytical components in there but no, it's not really meant to do the machine learning and things like that in Tableau. You consume the output of these things and you visualize in Tableau. Okay. 
but R is equally rich in visualization compared to Tableau, but again, Tableau comes with lots of GUI options. Cool. Okay. So with that, allow me to sign off here, guys. Um,